Okay. So, welcome everybody. So today the second lecture. So, and uh, it will be totally independent of the first lecture. So well, no, no knowledge of first lecture will be needed for the second lecture. Uh, just I have two little remarks concerning the first lecture, both uh, resulted from my communication with uh, Joseph Osterle. First, Joseph noted that uh, there was a, uh, some little mistake. So I made before Dobrovolsky's argument, I made two lemmas. One of these lemmas is not completely true. So one should be a bit careful with it. So. So I will, but in any case, I will return to this lemma from the very last lecture and uh, I will uh, rectify it, I will correct it. So do not worry. And the second thing also Joseph sent me a very, very uh, simple proof of uh, the euler schoenemann congruences uh, just in any level. Or it like the lens, it uses um, with vectors, but it is simpler than the lens. So I uploaded it to the same folder where the other documents are. So you are welcome to consult it. And thanks to Joseph. Okay. So today we will speak about transfinite diameter. Um, our main reference will be a book of Golusin. It's an old Russian book uh, from 50s, so it's uh, almost 70 years old. It was translated into English. The quality of translation is mediocre, but well, it is uh, readable. Um, and um, uh, we will just need one little uh, section. I uh, copied it and uploaded to the folder. I will more or less follow this section, but well, certain things I will um, treat slightly differently, not from point of view of ideas, but just uh, from point of view of kind of notational or whatever. Uh, so, um, transfinite diameter is um, very uh, classical notion. It was introduced almost 100 years ago in the work of uh, Fekete. And uh, in fact, uh, it was known, but well, uh, perhaps under different names, I believe, before Fekete. Fekete, an article of 1923. Uh, quite well written, but uh, well, it is in German, so not everybody likes to read in German, but uh, if you can read, it's, it's a pleasure to read this article, very good, very good article. But also uh, exposition in Golusin's book is also very good. So there are several definitions, even in this little Golusin's uh, section, he gives two definitions and shows the equivalence of uh, two definitions of transfinite diameter. And um, I will um, uh, use for uh, the purposes of this course, it will be convenient to use a definition in terms of uh, Chebyshev's polynomials of a compact set. So I will now quickly introduce this definition and show some properties of transfinite diameter calculate transfinite diameter of some uh, important sets, and then we will see how we continue. How... Okay, so everywhere here will be K, will be compact set. On complex plane. And well, uh, I said on the previous lecture that P is a prime number. There will be no prime numbers in this lecture, so we are free to use letter P as a poly for polynomial. So P of Z, let P of Z be a polynomial. 
And I will use notation, the norm of P with respect to K is just what we expect. It's just the sup norm, the maximum of, oh, sorry, the maximum of P of Z where Z runs through the set. So the biggest and absolute value, oh, value of this polynomial on K. And, uh, well, um, we are going to consider it uh, polynomials. It makes, it will make sense to consider monic polynomials. Because, well, uh, if we uh, want to estimate absolute value, if we multiply polynomial by some scalar, we can get as small as we wish. So we should, uh, should impose some normalization. So normalization will be that we will normally consider monic polynomials. And now we want among these monic polynomials, so given degree n, we want to find uh, the one which is uh, has smallest norm. So we denote by first mu n, we denote by mu n. Well, um, at this moment, I just put in femum. Where P is a monic polynomial of degree n. And the first observation that actually in the infimum is minimum. So there exists indeed some polynomial where uh, this mu n is attained. Well, why? This is obvious if the set K is finite. Now assume that K is infinite. And consider some uh, big number bigger than mu n. Denote it a. And uh, we uh, study the set of polynomials p, not necessarily monic. of degree bounded by n and of norm bounded by a. And uh, I claim that this set is compact because why? If we have an infinite set, then so this set is compact because when we have an infinite set uh, uh, when k is an infinite set so there are we can just pick uh, n plus one points and we see that uh, the values of our polynomials are bounded at n plus one points and this implies by um, Lagrange interpolation or whatever that also coefficients are bounded because the values of P at some n plus one points, we just pick some n plus one points, whatever, 
of k are bounded. And it follows that the coefficients are also bounded. Coefficients are bounded. So coefficients bounded, degree bounded, so we have a compact set. So we have a compact set. And uh, monic polynomials in this set, monic of degree n, uh, they are a closed subset here. Monic polynomials also with uh, norm bounded by A are also, also form a compact set. And so uh, this implies that, this implies and uh, this uh, function is of course continuous. So means that it takes, it uh, attains its smallest value. So continuous function and compact set. So there exists some polynomial that denote Tn, monic of degree n, such that its norm is exactly our mu n. Yeah. And it is uh, often called Chebyshev's polynomial of degree n for Please, Yuri, is it always unique? Oh, this is a very good question. I believe yes, but I don't know how to prove it. But I don't think that we ever need uniqueness. Golusin kind of avoids discussing this topic. I don't know. I believe that some way in Chebyshev, uh, Chebyshev was actually who introduced these kind of polynomials. And believe he somewhere proves that it must be unique. But well, I don't know. To be honest, I don't know. I believe yes, but I don't know how to. But anyway, I don't think we will ever need it. We will ever need it. Yeah. And uh, well, uh, so nth Chebyshev's polynomial. Nth Chebyshev's polynomial for k. And so its k norm is mu n, and uh, we consider nth root of this k norm denoted tau n. Mu n, nth root. And I claim uh, the tau n sequence to n converges. Well, it is a sequence of positive numbers and it is bounded. So first of all, note that to n is bounded. Yes, well, if we denote by d, the, not the transfinite diameter, but just naive diameter uh, of our k. Oh, this is just the smaller, the biggest distance between two points.
then clearly, then clearly, uh, tau n is bounded uh, by d because uh, because which can just take polynomial z minus z0 and where z0 some point some point and clearly for this uh, polynomial it is already at most d to the n okay so and so we obtain the tail. So we have a bounded sequence of positive numbers. So we only have to prove that lima inf and lim sup are the same. So this is what we want to prove. And well, it is quite easy. There is always, uh, well, here, same uh, nice trick. So the trick is the following, fix M, some M, and consider TM of Z, oh, yeah, oh, polynomial t m of z and now for uh, take arbitrary so m is fixed for now take arbitrary n well we do the euclidean division m q plus r And we consider the polynomial P of Z, which uh, Tm raised to power Q. And well, uh, we obtain polynomial of degree MQ. We need MQ plus R. So we add something. We just add Z minus Z0 to R, where Z0 is again some, some fixed point. It's monic of degree n and so what is its norm its norm is bounded here we have mu m to q and here we have D to R. And it follows that our, or we can write it as tau M, MQ, D to R. Okay, very well. Uh, then our, this implies that our tau N to N is, it is smaller than this norm because it is the smallest norm. So we obtain the following inequality, tau m to mq d to r. And so tau n is bounded, tau m mq over n d r over n. And well, uh, mq over n is at most one, so it is uh, simply tau m d r n. And when n tends to infinity, this will be one. So we obtain that lim super to n is bounded by to m. And uh, so far, n was varying, m uh, was fixed. And for every fixed m, we showed that lim sup is bounded. And then, well, it's enough because now 
we just take lim info on the right. And web. So this proves the clean. So our sequence to n converges. And its limit, it's called the to or to of k. And well, uh, this is how it's defined the Chebyshev's constant. Golusin calls this Chebyshev's constant and other authors. For k, but then one proves that what he defines as transfinite diameter, which defines slightly differently, is equal to this. So we just call it uh, transfinite diameter. As I said once again, so Golusin defines transfinite diameter differently, but then he proves that it is equal to, to this quantity. So we simply define transfinite diameter as this quantity. Now, okay, so this is the definition. Now let us speak on some simplest properties. First of all, for a finite set, it's obviously zero. Even for countable, uh, I believe for countable, it is less obvious for me that for countable set, uh, transfinite diameter is zero, but probably it is true. Well, it is less obvious to me. But probably it is true. Well, I don't know. Oh, well, co countable, countable, compact is finite. So, yeah, then doesn't make sense. Okay, so for finite set, k to of k is zero. Next, it is monotonic. If k prime is a subset of k, then clearly tau of k prime immediately follows from definition. And uh, third property that if we do affine transformation, then uh, uh, it behaves well. Lambda k plus uh, nu is lambda tau of k. So if we do just translation, uh, diameter doesn't change. If we apply some coefficient, then diameter multiplies by lambda. This is very easy. Simply the Chebyshev polynomial for the new one will be e easily expressed in terms of the previous. So it is Okay, so these are really easy properties that follow immediately from uh, the definition. Now less obvious properties, but we will need them, need them as well. Four. Let P be a polynomial of degree M, monic polynomial of degree M. And uh, we uh, take the inverse image of our compact. 
then the transfinite diameter behaves again nicely. It will be simply the transfinite diameter of K and mth root. This is less obvious and it will take us some time to prove it. Not that it is very hard, but well, some work is. And uh, five, property five, property five is that uh, the transfinite diameter of uh, uh, most important sets. First of the closed unit disk should be closed because we need a compact. It is one. And uh, for interval minus two, two, it is also one. And by using uh, the uh, this affine transformation, this implies that the transfinite diameter of any disk I never know how to write disk with C or with K. Probably K, right? Depends on maybe on the country. Any disk is equal to its radius. And uh, the transfinite diameter of uh, a straight line segment is one fourth of its length. So here length is four and diameter is one. Okay, so I will prove uh, properties uh, four and five now. So I will not go into proof one to three there immediately from definition. I will prove for four and five. And uh, for four, I need some uh, preliminary discussion. Uh, just the point is that, uh, well, Galuzin proves it, but he uses some uh, uh, Algebraic trick, but since he was analysis and not algebraist, uh, so he explains it not not very bit weirdly. It looks a bit strange. So uh, I would like to um, uh, just uh, speak on it. It's it's very very simple, very easy, but I think it would be useful to say a few words. So we consider the following situation. So. So let X and Y be two copies of the affine line, complex affine line. So A1 of C and also Y is also A1 of C. But I take uh, two copies because I want to distinguish between points at X and points at Y. And here we choose a, a coordinate function Here we choose coordinate Z, and here we choose some coordinate that we call W. Yeah. Actually, well, um, it's not, uh, well, what I'm going to say more or less extends to much more general situation. First of all, instead of a fine line, we can consider projective lines or arbitrary algebraicers or whatever, whatever. But well, I want to restrict to this case, which is exactly what we need. Now, uh, we consider, we consider the uh, polynomial in in this Z uh, uh, we that we again we assume monic and of degree m.
we will not always use need that it is monic, but it will be convenient to assume. And we can see the map defined uh, from X to Y defined by this polynomial simply uh, to every point with uh, 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 Z coordinate Z, we associate point whose omega, whose W coordinate is uh, P of Z. So, so from Z, we uh, point with coordinate Z, we associate point with coordinate P of Z. Or, well, uh, it's of course, there is a dual construction. We have uh, the fields of field of rational functions on our X, which is of course generated by Z, and the field of rational functions on our Y, which is of course generated by W. And uh, we simply this simply defines an embedding C of Y into C of X by simply W goes to P of Z. The image of W will be this P of Z. So we may consider this field as a subtype of this. And uh, we want to answer the following two questions. Which are um, not uh, a bit vaguely stated, but well, it will be more or less clear what, what the answer is. So first, assume that we have another polynomial another polynomial in Z. So which means uh, some function, some function on X. Some polynomial function on X. Can we how uh, associate to it in some natural way? Some polynomial in W. And second question with roles changed. We have Q of W and associate uh, some polynomial in Z. Well, well, um, I don't uh, specify what I mean associate in natural way, but from the answer it will be clear what I mean. And well, uh, so two, it's clear what it's obvious. There is only one way to associate it naturally. We just take uh, we just take the following. Uh, we simply take we substitute instead of W P O Z. And we obtain a polynomial in Z, and well, there is the only, only natural way of associating uh, or it can be uh, viewed as uh, the image of Q of Z under our embedding.
So we said W. Okay, W, sorry. So this is this is really clear what we have to do. In one, uh, it is uh, somewhat less obvious, and uh, uh, we do the following: uh, we write Q of Z as uh, we factorize it, the product of. So we uh, here we want it to be monic. I want it to be monic. It will be enough for us. And then uh, we associate to it a polynomial capital Q of W, which is looks like defined a bit wordly, but we will see that it is uh, it is not word at all. We just take the following. We take a polynomial whose roots are p of alpha one, p of alpha n. But well, uh, looks weird. But actually, it is it is nothing but just the norm. So like here, it is, uh, it is. Uh, well, simply embedding from here to here, but from here to here, what we can do? Well, we can do many things, but in particular, we can do the norm. And this is exactly the norm. So it is, uh, it's uh, immediate verification that it is simply the norm. I let you do it. I don't want to do it myself. And uh, if we want uh, to calculate the value, if we take some gamma element in uh, y in uh, the w plane, how we calculate Q of gamma, capital Q of gamma? Well, we calculate it, it is small q of up to the sign beta one, beta n, where beta one, beta n is just the fiber above gamma. So, uh, sorry, m. Roots of p of z minus gamma, which is again clear. It's natural uh, that it must be like this because, well, if it is norm, then its value must be the product of values of the fiber. So, and uh, well, uh, it's uh, kind of immediate verification. Again, I uh, I skip the verification. It is uh, you can you can try to do it yourself. So. Okay, so after this bit, uh, well, uh, kind of tautological, almost tautological discussion, we can uh, return to our statement. So return to statement four. Let me remind what we wanted to prove. We have uh, K is a compact. P of Z monic polynomial of degree M and uh, we want to show that uh, the transfinite diameter of the P preimage uh, of K is the transfinite diameter of K 
raised to power one over m, one over the degree of our polynomial. And we will use exactly the construction that I explained on the previous slide. So first, let Tn of Z, so just to uh, uh, just to um, uh, simplify the notation, I denote uh, this preimage as uh, k star, and everything related to it will be star. So in particular, t star n of z is uh, Chebyshev's polynomial of level n for k star. Oh, sorry. For K star and just normal Tn of W for K. Okay, so let us start from Tn of W and uh, we have uh, some polynomial, we have Chebyshev polynomial on K, and we want to produce some polynomial on K star on the inverse image. And uh, this is, uh, as we have seen, this is easy. We just take uh, Tn of P of Z and uh, consider this is polynomial of degree. of degree mn on with k star, you can see that on k star. And what is its norm on k star? Well, it's clear because we take, uh, when we take p uh, z in k star, with p of z will be on k, so its norm will be exactly the norm of Tn on K. And uh, it is to n raised to the power n. But what is this? This is bigger than to mn star, this is for K star, raised to the power mn because it is not, well, we can only know, oh, sorry, this is greater or equal than, not, not well written. So on the other hand, Tn of P on K star, it must be greater or equal it's of degree mn, so mu mn star, or this is tau mn star raised to power mn. And so what we obtain? We obtain that tau mn star raised to power mn is bounded than tau n raised to power n, and so this will be tau n one over m. And taking the limit, taking the limit, we obtain, because n is arbitrary, the tau star is bounded than tau 1 over m. So we proved inequality in one direction. We want to show that these two quantities are the same, but now we proved inequality in one direction. To prove in the other direction, we now start uh, the Chebyshev on k star of degree n. And uh, you remember uh, we consider uh, the polynomial 
like this if alpha one alpha n are its roots then we take uh, p of w we take p of w as uh, well it's norm so which is given by uh, sorry p not good p is already occupied let me call it i will call it q of w oh capital q of w as w minus p of alpha one w minus p of alpha n and we have seen that uh, if gamma is some point uh, in k and beta one beta m roots of p of w minus gamma then this beta one beta m just by the definitions belong to k star and so and q of gamma is tn star of beta one up to the sign tn star of beta m and uh, this implies that uh, the norm of q the norm of q with respect to k is bounded the norm of tn star with respect to k star we take product of m values so we should raise to power m but q is also of degree n so this means that uh, the norm of q with respect to k is at least uh, tau n raised to n and this is tau n star raised to mn so we obtain that uh, tau n raised to n is bounded by tau n star raised to mn or tau n 1 over m is bounded by tau n star again taking limit we obtain the tau 1 over m is bounded by tau star and so we had inequalities in both directions we had in this uh, direction and we have in this direction so the two quantities coincide so we have that tau equal to sorry tau star equal to tau 1 over m or this is exactly what we wanted to prove so any questions on this i, I um, it looks a bit notational i agree but well i don't know how to how to explain it better so well, this is uh, kind of well um this is more or less uh, analog uh, well, uh, this uh, of uh, the height uh, inequalities that when how height behave under morphisms of degree d so for those who know heights it is uh, it's more or less must must look natural yeah now let us speak on uh, property five so property five was about the uh, transfinite diameter of disk and the uh, straight line segment. So we take as k now closed disk. And we want to, we want to calculate its transfinite diameter. 
just take some polynomial. Some monic polynomial. Well, P of Z, Z N plus A N minus one. Z n minus one plus etc plus a zero. And now what we know about well pk. Well, we know that biggest value it takes on the boundary by the maximum principle, which implies that uh, pk is greater or equal than the integral, the average with respect to this boundary. So, which is So it looks like oh. so uh, as an accident like last time, looks like my computer, my uh, tablet is a bit uh, uh, warmed, so I should restart the screen. I'm sorry, I okay. stop share and I should re restart it. Now it works, so I can restart it. Okay. So the integral squared, and here of course is also squared, uh, dt. So it's bounded from below by this inter integral. And this integral is, of course, by Parseval, we can easily calculate. It is uh, just one plus uh, a n uh, minus one squared plus etc plus a zero squared. And this is at least one. So we obtain that whatever is the polynomial, it's normal is at least one for any monic polynomial. On the other hand, if we take the polynomial Tn of z as z to the n, then its norm is exactly one. So we obtain that mu n is just one, and so tau n is also one, so all of them are ones, and we obtain that tau is one. So the transfinite diameter of the disk is one. This is very easy. So the k norm of any polynomial is at least one, and we have one polynomial whose norm is exactly one. Okay, with interval, it's uh, more or less the same, but uh, slightly, slightly trickier. So if we take now k as interval minus two, two, and we take uh, p of z again, some polynomial of degree n, and, uh, well, we may assume that the coefficients are real. Because uh, k is real, and so if uh, 
uh, if we have some imaginary coefficients, they only may increase the norm. So they cannot decrease the norm if we add some imaginary part. So we may assume that P of Z has real coefficients. And then what is uh, is exactly well uh, we just parameterize by cosine the points on our interval it's maximum of uh, of p of two cosine t where t runs zero to pi. Now, if we write p cosine t, and we know that uh, p is monic and uh, its coefficients are real, then p of uh, two cosine t will be some expression involving cosines of multiple angles like nt and minus 1t and so on. And uh, what is uh, important, because since it is monic, the here the nt, the coefficient, must be just two, or if we take two cosine nt, so there will be coefficient one. So this is important. So here we have just two cosine nt and plus other terms, a n minus one times two cosine n minus one t plus, etc. plus a zero. But here it is uh, no coefficient with two cosine nt. And uh, we denote uh, this guy as q of t. So this is some trigonometric polynomial. In Now, what we obtain, we obtain that uh, P K squared is maximum of Q of T squared And this is great to equal, of course, then the integral again, oh, two pi from zero to two pi Q of T squared. Well, I may put absolute value, so it's not needed. Everything is real, DT. And now again, we use Parseval cosines are well uh, orthogonal. So we can again use Parseval. One should only be careful here a bit. Uh, so, uh, so I believe it will be something like this, like two plus two a n minus one squared plus etc. plus two a one squared. But a zero will be without two. I believe uh, it it is uh, it is something like this. Anyway, it is not really important. What is important is that we have two here. So it is at least two. And uh, what we obtain, we obtain that uh, the square norm of PK is at least two. And so the norm itself is at least square root of two. So, Mu n 
is at least square root of 2, and tau n is at least uh, square root of 2, 1 over n. So this means that the tau, when we take the limit, we obtain the tau is at least 1. Now, to show that it is exactly one, we use, uh, well, not, well, uh, I want to use classical, well, one can want to use classical Chebyshev's polynomials. I prefer to use uh, some uh, renormalization of Chebyshev's polynomials, like Dixon polynomials. What is Dixon polynomial is, uh, is the polynomial defined by dn of 2 cosine t is 2 cosine nt. It's known that it is such a, there is such a polynomial. Or uh, equivalent definition dn of z plus z minus 1 is uh, zn plus z2 minus n. And uh, the norm of this Dixon polynomial the norm of this of this Dixon polynomial is uh, well two because it is two cosine nt, so the biggest value is two. But, well, so what is interesting, we do not show that this is the best approximation polynomial. To, to show it because we showed only that uh, lower bound for the norm is not 2, we obtain lower bound square root of 2, and here we have 2. So, uh, but to calculate the transfinite diameter, it is sufficient because then tau n is bounded by 2, 1 over n, and so tau is at most one. And so we found that tau is one. So this is basically the whole uh, theory about uh, transfinite diameter that uh, well, I wanted to tell, so not, not much theory, for I, I'm sure that for a big part of the audience it's all well known and perhaps in a better form than I, uh, I gave it, but well, I, I had to say something. And now I will state a crucial theorem uh, that was used uh, by, uh, well, actually the main, main fact used in Dimitrov's proof, it's a theorem of uh, Dubinin. Theorem of Dubinin, it tells about transfinite diameters of uh, special uh, kind of uh, compacts called hedgehogs. They also can, can be called stars or there are some other name, but I, I adore the name hedgehog, so I will use it. So hedgehog, So A0 will be kind of center, and then A1, AN vertices is the following guy. We take some point A, A, on the complex plane, A0, and then we just uh, put straight uh, segments to the other. For instance, here N is equal to four. So this is A0, so A1, A2, A3, a4. Okay, so this kind of uh, this kind of uh, set will be called hedgehog. And of course, among the hedgehogs, there are some nicest. The regular.
and hedgehog. Is simply what it is uh, H of with center, center will be just at zero, and then uh, uh, the points will be simply nth roots of unity one zeta n zeta n squared, etc. zeta n n minus one. So like like here oh, i'm not very good in drawing pictures sorry So assume that this is a unit circle. So circle is not a part of hedgehog, only the segments. So this is the case n equal to eight, I believe. And well, I will simply denote it hn. And the transfinite diameter of Hn is very easy to calculate. If we take a polynomial P of Z equal to Z to the N, then what is Hn? Hn is simply inverse image under this polynomial of the unit interval of zero one. And this implies that the transfinite diameter of Hn is transfinite diameter of this 0, 1 raised to power 1 over n. But this is, we just saw that transfinite diameter of a segment is one fourth of its length. So it will be 4 to minus one over n. Okay, and uh, this is uh, for this regular hedgehog. Now what happens with the arbitrary hedgehog? Theorem of Dubinin Theorem of Dubinin, proved also long ago. This is the newest result used by Dimitrov. All the other results used in his proof are much older. And I think it is theorem that you could also explain to faculty in twenties, he would probably understand it. is the following. If instead of roots of unity, we take some arbitrary points on the unit circle, we also obtain some hedgehogs. So let A1, AN be some points on the unit circle on S1, which means it's simply A1, uh, complex numbers of absolute value 1. And we consider the this kind of hedgehog. For instance, here n equal to five. And the bean the theorem tells that. Uh, its transfinite diameter is always uh, less or equal than the transfinite diameter of the regular. So, we 
So the regular among all these n hedgehogs with the vertices on the unit circle, the regular has the biggest transfinite diameter. This is uh, the theorem of Dubinin. And uh, an immediate consequence, if we no longer assume these guys lying on the circle, just arbitrary complex numbers, just arbitrary complex numbers, then the transfinite diameter of uh, of this general hedgehog is bounded by this factor, which is crucial, 4 to minus 1 over n, and then simply the maximum of the absolute value. And this is where the house of algebraic number comes out from this maximum. Well, so corollary is indeed uh, it follows uh, because we simply, by the property that a part of a hedgehog is uh, has smaller transfinite diameter, a part of a compact has smaller than the a bigger one, the monotonicity, and affine transformation. So it is uh, immediate from the easy properties of transfinite diameter. Well, concerning the proof, so I was hesitating and I decided that I will not, most probably I will not prove the theorem of Dubin in this course. So, uh, well, I'm afraid that for this, I will need um, a bit more complex analysis. Uh, well, uh, I think probably I will need one more lecture to give a full, uh, complete proof of the theorem of Dubinin. And uh, well, um, if I really have a lot of time left, I will probably reconsider this and maybe give some idea, but uh, for time being, we just take this for granted. And this will be the only deep result that we take for granted, the theorem of Dubinin. All the other things I'm more or less proving. So this is the only thing that I'm not going to prove. Okay. So this is all what I wanted to say on transfinite diameter and hedgehogs and theorem of Dubinin. I still have uh, like quarter an hour left. First of all, are there any questions before I start the new part of the course? Is there a reference of this paper? Yes, Purushutam. Is there a reference of the paper? Someone wants to ask a question? Uh, can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me? Who? Uh, Purushutam here. Purushutam, I, uh, well, I hear you, but uh, but do you have a question or you just... Uh... No, no, I wanted to ask, is there a reference of this paper of Dubimin? Sorry? The result of Dubimin, do we have a reference? Uh, yeah, I, uh, well, uh, I can upload, I have the article, I have the English translation. Okay, the problem perfect, perfect. is that English translation is really disastrous. Nice. Okay. Very bad. There is also a book of Dubinin. Okay. And it is it proves there in some chapter, and there is um, there is some nice write up due to Harry Schmidt. Harry, are you here? No, Harry today is not here. There is some nice write up, but one should uh, figure out why what Harry wrote uh, is uh, actually proves uh, the theorem of Dubinin. So one needs some uh, some bridge. Okay. Yes, so uh, I will. Um, so I will upload the article of Dubinin, but please, uh, so be careful. It's really well. Uh, in, the translation is is uh, okay. No problem. Sure, extremely sure. bad. Yes. Okay. And I will also check a chapter in his book, and there are there are some materials. I will I will upload something. At this moment, I did not upload. Okay. Good. So then we can uh, start the section three or chapter three. 
And this is theorem of Poya. It's also related to transfinite diameter. It's an old, beautiful classical theorem. It is the following theorem. So let K be a, a compact as before. And we assume now, we assume now that K is uh, symmetric with respect to X axis. Means that symmetric means that if Z is in K, then also the conjugate is okay. Next, we take the complement in the extended, in the Riemann sphere, so. And um, I will assume again that this is simply connected. This assumption is actually not needed. The symmetricity is needed is absolutely, uh, Nothing but all without. Here, one does not really need, but it will simplify uh, slightly simplify the argument, so it doesn't really matter and uh, sufficient for us because we will apply when k is a hedgehog and it's clear the true hedgehog. And we take a function which is uh, allomorphic or reg regular on on this complement. And well, it it is also regular at infinity, so it has Taylor expansions infinity. It is, so it starts from constant term, A0, and then coming the negative powers of Z because it's expansion at infinity. A1Z plus A2 over Z squared plus etc. Well, in article of Poe, he considered near zero, not near, near infinity, but for our applications, it would be more convenient to to work uh, with expansion at infinity. So. And what is the theorem of Poya? It was proved actually in the same year when uh, Fekete introduced transfinite diameter and Poya does not use the terminology transfinite diameter in his article. Uh, he, speaks in terms of what is called conformal radius. I don't want to go into these details. Perhaps I will say if I decide finally to prove the theorem of Dubinian, perhaps I would mention what the connection. But uh, anyway, um, and it was not the first work uh, on uh, this kind. There were some previous work by Borel, Fatou, by Seton Carlson, and so on. Anyway, Poya established really a very, very uh, general result. So in 23, so you see 100 years ago. Assume that two things. That first, the transfinite diameter is strictly smaller than one. And second, that the coefficients are integral. And then it is only possible when f is a rational function. So K 
cannot have transcendental function. We cannot have transcendental function uh, or even algebraic function with a, uh, which expands to with integral coefficients and uh, at infinity, and which is uh, uh, regular on a complement of a small set of a set of small transfinite depth. So it's certainly, certainly very, very best uh, possible because, uh, well, uh, you can give uh, already which example. Well, I think there are many examples where just uh, with K, the um, Unit disk. Well, it's many many functions which have the unit circle as a natural border of uh, natural boundary of analyticity. So it's really, really best possible. You cannot even write here less or equal. So it must be strictly small. And well, uh, I will prove uh, this theorem on the next on the next lecture. And uh, well, uh, how it will go? So the proof requires another very classical theorem. Also, Hungarian theorem, theorem of Fekete Segur. This is uh, fifty five. So uh, it will be not the proof that uh, Poya gave himself. Poya used uh, uh, what is called the Kronecker criterion. What is Kronecker criterion? It's the following. We can see the determinants well, A0, A0, A1, A1, A2, A0, A1, A2, A1, A2, A3, A2, A3, A3 A4, etc. Well, the law is clear. And the uh, function F is rational. If and only if, uh, starting from some point on, this discriminant vanish. These discriminants from some point on. Uh, I will give uh, a proof based. Uh, um, I will give a proof based on this Kronecker Sega theorem. I don't have time now to state it. I will do it uh, on Monday, and uh, it is a proof uh, due to Raphael Robinson. It does not use uh, this Kronecker criterion. I did not upload the article of Robinson because uh, 
it was easier for me just to listen to what uh, Vesely and Dimitrov explained uh, than to read the article from them, but I, I can also upload it. I think something like uh, 69. Okay, so uh, I think uh, I think uh, it is uh, enough for, for today. So if there are any questions, I'm ready to listen. Uh, Yuri, uh, hi Yuri, can you hear me? Yes. So the uh, the criteria, just the uh, rational, the determinants vanish. There, you don't really. I mean, it's for true for any field, right? This criteria, right? Yeah, well, yes, but point is that when you deal with integers, you need to, I it's see. easy to show that they vanish. You should just okay, show okay, that okay, small, okay, yes. okay, Yeah, checking yeah. would be easier. I see. Well, easier. I, I don't see. say easier, I say easier. <laughs> okay. And the, the rational function also, you can make sure, I mean, if it's a rational function, you can make sure the, the, the both sides are monic or something, the numerator and denominator or something. Sorry? Or the, uh, the, you have a power series over Z, you are showing it's rational. Uh, so I am assuming it will be defined over Z or both the numerator and the denominator. Fx by Qx, where F and. No, uh, I don't uh, understand. Uh, the, the, the theorem. Polia, polia, yeah, F is a rational function. Or yeah, no, but if the coefficients are rational, uh, mm -hmm. then yeah, they the, must the, be defined over Z, yes. Mm -hmm. over no, the, uh, but can you make sure that something is monic or something? No. I don't think, uh, well, it's rational function. I don't think That's it's right. monic. Yeah. yeah, no, I don't think so. Basically, you take any rational function and the uh, statement to well, it's it's true, yeah, irregular, yeah. yes. So, Thank you. Okay, bye.